your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, I'm going to read verses 1 and 2 here for our foundational scripture. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, say every weight, every weight, and the sin, say and the sin, <clears throat> which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Now, the Greek word for patience there is cheerful endurance. If you run your race, begrudgingly, with a wrong attitude, you will not get a reward at the end of the race. It'll be burned up. It'll be wood, hay, and stubble. Amen? But if you run your race, Cheerfully and with the right attitude, you'll get a reward. You know, there is a reward for our attitudes. You know that? I know a lady that her name is uh, Mary Kay Baxter. She wrote a book called A Divine Revelation of Hell. If you haven't read that, I'd recommend that you do sometimes. That'll scare the hell out of me. Because Jesus took her to hell for 30 nights in a row. And she got to where she wanted to see him coming. And when, when he'd show up, they would go down to hell. And she saw people burning alive in hell. Every night, that's where Jesus would take her for 30 nights. You know, a lot of people today, even Christians, don't believe in hell. They're deceived. I said they're deceived. There is a hell. And it's real. And it's hot. It's hot as hell. You don't want to go there. <clears throat> and uh, after those 30 days concluded, Jesus took her to heaven for 10 days. And he said, there's a book in heaven. It's got your name in it. And all the stuff you did. And then you're going to be judged by your attitude, the attitude by what you did. Did you have the right attitude about it? Or just, well, I'll do it. But well, guess what? Then you won't get credit for it. Mary came back to him and said there's a place for certain help for people that come against their pastor. Then you're like, whoa, whoa. I'm so glad as a blessing to my pastor all those many years. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it's for my benefit, that would be a blessing. Yeah. Plus, it also benefits him too. Amen. Because then he served the Lord with joy. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. So, it's good to run a race cheerfully, with a cheerful attitude. Say, a cheerful attitude. Cheerful. The race is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Say, look unto Jesus. Jesus. The author and finish her of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. I know that Jesus was focused. Now he walked in love, he operated in compassion, but as when he became tougher to bear, as if you were being used by the enemy to distract him from his mission. Then he could get pretty tough with you. I mean, all that he was mission focused. He was focused on the cross. And he did not allow anything or anybody to distract him. So I guess my question to you today is are you distracted? What's distracting you from the cross? I'm talking about from your cross, not his cross. He'll endure his cross. 
Your cross is in resistance to those things he redeemed you from. What is distracting you today from your mission? Everybody's got a mission. <laughs> so everybody's got a mission. Praise God. Now, when we were in Bloomington back in uh, September, I believe it was the second week in September, a relational gathering and listened to Dr. Harrison. Now, I'd already heard her teach on focus. I got her podcast on it. She did a whole series on it. And it would have been very easy for me to have that attitude. Ah, I've already heard that. That's what a lot of Christians do. Ah, I've already heard that. Well, how does faith come? By having heard, right? No. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's how faith comes. It doesn't come by having heard it. It comes by hearing. And uh, so I've had my mind... So you can talk about attitude right now. Never mind. I'm going to listen to this message like I did, like I never heard it preached before. Amen. Then I knew I'd get something. Amen. I could have raised my dad and be like, I've already heard this. But this is my mama. See, I, I, I honor. How many of you honor men of God and women of God? Amen. Isn't Miss Pat lovely? Yes. Isn't she a lovely woman? Yes. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And so I got my pen and paper. I said, I'm going to take notes and listen to this like I've never heard it before. And uh, so I ended up taking, I don't know, three or four pictures of notes at least. And so, and it was anointed. I don't know, God's word is anointed. When God's word is preached from an anointed vessel, a vessel on whom rests the anointing, you're going to get something. You know, you've heard it preached before. I know I, 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 I called Dr. or I called, well, he could be a doctor, I don't know. I called Pastor Sloper. She was scheduled to preach in his church that night and in the next morning. I said, how'd it go? He said, oh, he said, Brother Long. He said, she's the most anointed I've ever heard. He said, she sat in a chair while she preached. He said, oh, it was so anointed. It was so anointed. He said, the anointing just rolled in there. You don't got to put your stem on there to be anointed. You don't got to yell or holler to get results. God's not hard to hear. And neither is the devil. But he recognizes authority. When he sees it. You listen to me? He said, oh, she was a woman. So, <clears throat> I'm going to share some things this morning from notes that I took. Now, what I have jotted down here are things I heard her say. It's also things that God has told me over the years. I, I did this kind of mixture of notes I took that weekend, and other things that God has told me down through the years that um, are in line with this message. Some of the things are things that maybe she didn't say, but it's things that I heard her say. I know what that means. I mean, know that two people hear the same message, they'll come away with something a little bit different. You look at their notepad, and they took different notes. You know, they heard the same message. How many know that? There are two people who hear the message from victory. One, they, they both come in discouraged. One gets set free. The other one stays discouraged. What happened? It all depends on how you hear. That's so why Jesus said, take heed what you hear, right? So it all depends on what you hear and how you hear what you hear. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Practice working on yourself. Quit working on everybody else. Practice working on yourself. Why, you ask? Because changed people, say changed people. Because changed, C-H-A-N-G-E-D, changed people, changed people. You got that? 
changed people, changed people. Focus, say focus. Focus is a clear definition. The center of your interest. When you stay focused on God, you become a magnet, drawing everything you need to you. Focus is keeping God the passion of my interest. In other words, fixed eyes, fixed mouth, say fixed mouth, fixed mouth. and fixed heart. When you go on Facebook, what are you looking at? Are you distracted? You spend all your time watching the news and that's it? If that's all you watch, all you hear then is bad news. That'll become a distraction to this right here. Hello. I said, hello. So, focus is keeping God the passion of my interest. In other words, fixed eyes, fixed mouth, and a fixed heart. <clears throat> Face your fears <clears throat> with faith in the Word of God. <clears throat> Face your fears with faith in the Word of God. Once a person makes a decision to live and walk by faith in the Word of God, there is no plan B. I said there is no plan B. Focus on the future, not the past. That's a heavy record right there. Focus on the future, not the past. A focused life begins and ends with a passion for God. Distractions, say distractions. Distractions is the malfunction of focus. This will be on the, our website in case you want to go back there. Don't focus on the disturbance. Focus on the divine. <clears throat> distraction, say distraction. <clears throat> distraction is an invasion of the mind that brings confusion. Amen. It's not good to be distracted. Jesus stayed focused in me. Remember one time, Peter, when Jesus said, said, said something about going to the cross to, to die, he said, no, that's not going to happen to you, Jesus. What did what, what, what Jesus do? He rebuked Peter. And what did he say? He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Now, he wasn't calling Peter Satan. He's talking to that demon that was lying to people. See, demons lie to people about things. You want to spend time in the Word of God? <laughs> spend time in prayer? Spend time fasting? There's a good chance you're listening to a devil, a lying devil. Well, after Sermon said, this is years ago, he's in heaven now. He said, the time is coming in America. <clears throat> That's what he said. Where two thirds of the American people are going to be demon possessed. I think we're getting really close. A lot of these people that are doing all these crazy things, those are demons. People don't realize that, those are demons. Here's a, here's a good news they can be set free. How? By coming to Jesus. By coming to Jesus. And He can clean them up, cleanse them, and, and get them on the right path. Amen? <clears throat> And then get into a good church that preaches the word of God. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> See, when I <clears throat> was encouraging, you know, Brother Ed this morning to, to, to bring uh, Sister Pat to church, I wasn't being me. I wasn't being me. I was trying to get her to act on her faith. Something will happen supernaturally when you act on her faith. Nothing will happen if you don't act in faith. Nothing will happen. Do you know that? People, people pray for healing. That's not how healing comes. Healing does not come by praying for it. Healing comes when you act in the Word of God. Now, healing always comes. See, Jesus already got your healing. But healing is not received by praying for it. It's not how it's received. Healing is received by acting in the Word of God. That's how it's received. That's what activates the power of God is by acting on the Word of God, by acting on your faith. Now, 
If the gifts of healings, see, the King James says gift, gifts of healing, it's actually plural, it should be gifts of healings, plural, is one of the one here. It's one of the one healing gifts. So it should be gifts of healings, plural. That's how it says it in the, in the Greek. If the, if the gifts of the Spirit are in operation, if somebody gets healed by the gifts of healings, they don't got to do anything. I said they don't got to do anything. The Holy Spirit does it. God does it. But guess what? You can't always depend on the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible says the gifts of the Spirit operate as the Spirit wins. I can't turn them on, turn them off. Now I have. I have. I operate in the gifts of healings. I operate in the gifts of faith. But it's as the Spirit wills. I can't turn it on, turn it off. It is going to be. Now, having said that, if somebody does get healed by one of the gifts of the Spirit, and that does happen from time to time, they don't got to do anything. They better make sure they're in a good church. Why? So that if the devil comes back, put those symptoms back upon them, they'll know how to keep with them. They'll know how to keep their healing. And what the Bible says to hold fast at what you receive. Well, if you couldn't lose it, why would the Bible say hold fast to it? In fact, he says hold fast to it means the devil will steal it from you. So you want to make sure you're in a good church so that you know how to keep it. Amen. Say amen. Don't allow anything to divert your focus. <clears throat> and don't allow something that's right and good to distract you from God's best. I said, don't allow something that's right and good to distract you from God's best. Go with me, please, to uh, Luke chapter 10. <clears throat> Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. Verse 38. says, Now it came to pass as they went that Jesus entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Say she heard his word. Heard his word. And Martha was comforted about much serving, and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care? She put the guilt trip on Jesus. Could you imagine doing that? I mean, think about this. Jesus is teaching. Martha's sitting at the feet of Jesus. And, or Mary, I'm sorry. Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus. And Martha interrupts Jesus' teaching. That's pretty bold, isn't it? Huh? Lord, dost thou not, not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she should help me. Now she's giving Jesus an instruction. <clears throat> Hang on. Martha should humble herself. Like Mary was doing. And Jesus answered and said unto her, <clears throat> Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But only one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now how many know that what Martha was doing was good and right? Right? It's good to have a servant's heart, isn't it? And to serve the people that to come to your house for, for a meal, that's good, that's good, isn't it? But she allowed the fact that Mary was not helping her and was sitting at the feet of Jesus receiving the word of God to distract her from God's best. Martha was doing something that was good and right. But what Mary was doing <clears throat> was receiving God's best. <clears throat> So, let's not allow something that's good and right to be used by the enemy to distract you from God's best. <clears throat> Wanting the approval and praise of man is a distraction. You know that? Busyness, say busyness. <clears throat> busyness is a distraction. I learned this many, many years ago while selling insurance. And it still fits today. It's still true today. Don't confuse activity with accomplishment. Don't confuse activity with accomplishment. You can be active, but be accomplishing very, very little, if anything. 
<clears throat> stubbornness. Say, st say stubbornness. <clears throat> stubbornness can be a distraction. Turn your neighbor and say, don't you be stubborn now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Losing your focus will cause you to malfunction. I said losing your focus will cause you to malfunction. A distraction can be a major crisis or it can be a minor choice. Now in closing, let me say this. In closing, let me say this. Stay focused on the main thing. For your neighbor and say, stay focused on the main thing. Stay focused on the main thing. That's particularly true today with us being ever so close to the rapture of the church. You want to stay focused on the main thing. You're going to make sure you're ready to go. When that trumpet blows, make sure you're in the spirit that day. And you hear that trumpet blow. And you're ready to meet your Lord in the air. Amen. 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 I always wanted to fly. Preacher goes, you get me to. <laughs> I heard Brother Hope was his one time. He said, I can't prove this by the word of God. You can't prove this, not so. He, he said, this is years ago. He said, he believed that Adam and Eve could fly before the fall. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. I want to come back to the real ring of Christ and be able to fly around. Yeah. I don't even want to be able to do it. Just fly around. Not like a bird just fly around, you know. Yeah. I, I, I love flying. We're getting ready to fly to Scottsdale, Arizona, in, in, in a few weeks. And I'm looking forward just to, just to the flight. Now, I'm going to have fun seeing my son, if you don't understand, but I'm really looking forward to the flight. Because I get a big kick out of flying. I know... Um, <clears throat> I'm in a group coaching session with, uh, involved in a group coaching session with uh, uh, Pastor Ernie Beers. And I mentioned how I enjoy flying. And I said, I get a rush when I fly. They all thought I was crazy. They all thought I was nuts. But I just really enjoy flying. And I always believe for a window seat. And usually I get one. If I don't get one, preacher switches with me. <laughs> Unless she's in the middle, and I'm on the other end, then we can't switch. Or if we can, but we're still not next to the window. So I always believe for a window seat. So believe with me for a window seat. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's all say this. Let's stand up. And uh, let's say this. Say, in the name of Jesus, I am determined to finish the race with joy. With joy. I will not get distracted and lose my focus. I'm determined to stay focused on my mission, to stay focused on God's kingdom, to stay focused on the Word of God. In the name of Jesus, my eyes are fixed. My mouth is fixed. Go like this. My mouth is fixed. And my heart is fixed. I won't look at anybody, but I said, my, my mouth is fixed. Somebody really smiled real big. <laughs> Almost like they've got problems in that area sometimes. But I won't look at the person that was going that was smiling really big. But he said, so I'm going to face my fears with faith in the Word of God. I'm going to face my fears with faith in the Word of God. I'm going to focus on the future, not the past. I'm going to focus on the future, not the past. I have a passion for God. I have a passion for God. I have a passion for God's Son. I have a passion for God's Son. I have a passion for souls. I have a passion for souls. And bless God, I'm focused. And bless God, I'm focused. You hear me now? You hear me now? I'm focused. I'm not going to lose it. I'm not going to lose it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And God's happy with me. And God's happy with me. Therefore, I'm happy with myself. Now, Lift your hands and receive the spoken blessing. How many got something this morning from the Word of God? We went in different directions this morning. And, and now let me let me very carefully as your pastor. God was saying some things this morning. Let us receive. As I know that you all are, you all are good people. I know all of you are good people. You're, 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 you all love God. You're all people of faith. 
Amen. Uh, Brother Ed, Sister Pam Lopak, they're people of faith. They're people of faith. You all are people of faith. Amen. You ready? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace and prosperity. The Lord shall put his name upon you. And he will bless you. Because he said, if, if we would speak the word, the word blessing, he told us to speak. He put his name upon you. And he would bless you. Therefore, he will. So you receive it. Expect something good to happen to you. Expect unexpected blessings to come your way. In Jesus' name, amen.